Encyclical Letter Saint Be Venerabilis Fratres, Thanksgiving for 25 Years of Pontificate by Pope Pius IX. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Encyclical Epistle of His Holiness Pope Pius IX To All Patriarchs, Primates, Archbishops, Bishops, and other ordinaries in communion with the Holy See. Venerable Brethren, Health and Apostolical Benediction. Often, Venerable Brethren, during our long pontificate, have we turned to you and intimated how gratefully we have received the proofs of devotion and love which the God of all mercy has put it into your minds and into the minds of your faithful flocks to show to us and the apostolic see. When the enemies of God began to invade its civil dominion, in order that, if it were possible, they might prevail against Jesus Christ and his church, which is his body and the fullness thereof, you, venerable brethren, and the Christian people, have, without ceasing, besought God, whom the winds and the sea obey, that he would still the tempest. Nor have you desisted from repeating again and again the testimonies of your love, or from discharging every duty by which you could console us in our tribulation. And when this city, the capital of the whole Catholic world, was wrested from us, and we were placed at the disposal of those who had oppressed us, you, together with the multitude of the faithful of your dioceses, redoubled your prayers, and with your numerous denunciations you asserted the sacred rights of religion and justice that had been most audaciously trampled upon. And now that, by an event unknown since the days of St. Peter, and unprecedented in the whole succession of the Roman pontiffs, we have attained the twenty-sixth year of our pontificate in the chair of Rome. You have given such magnificent proofs of your joy on account of this great mercy granted to our littleness, and you have so brilliantly exhibited in action the vigorous life with which the entire household of Christ is animated, that we have been profoundly affected at it. And, uniting our prayers to you, we have been afresh encouraged to look with greater confidence than ever for the complete and absolute triumph of the Church. It has been most gratifying to us to know that in every part of the world the faithful have made, in vast crowds, pilgrimages to celebrated sanctuaries, and that great assemblages of Catholics have been gathered at those sanctuaries, and there, under the leadership of their own pastors, have publicly offered up their prayers and made their communions to thank God for the great mercy he has bestowed upon us, and to beseech him to give the victory to his church. We felt our sorrows alleviated, nay, turned into joy, at the congratulations contained in your letters, at your assurances of loyalty, at your prayers, and at the very numerous arrivals of Catholics from all parts, amongst whom were many distinguished by noble rank and by ecclesiastical and civil dignities, and still more ennobled by their faith, all of whom, being united in feeling and in act, together with a large number of the citizens of Rome and of the provinces that have been seized on, from different and distant realms, have traveled hither with one accord, and have voluntarily exposed themselves to the same perils and insults to which we are exposed, in order that they might come face to face with us and there testify the pious sentiments of themselves and their fellow citizens, and also might present to us volumes, containing many hundred thousand signatures of the faithful of all nations to addresses, in which they characterized in the severest terms the invasion of our princedom, and earnestly maintained that its restitution was demanded and enjoined by every principle of religion, justice, and even of civilization. By this occasion also, there hath accrued to us a receipt of money larger than ordinary, both poor and rich having exerted themselves to relieve the poverty that had been brought upon us, added to which there were also manifold presents of various kinds and of great value, forming a magnificent tribute of the productions of Christian art and genius, excellently adapted to exalt the twofold power, spiritual and royal, granted to us by Almighty God. There was also an extensive and splendid supply of sacred vestments and church furniture, out of which we were enabled to assist the poverty and meanness of a great many churches in different places. Truly it was a wondrous spectacle of Catholic unity, and one which clearly proved that the universal church, although spread over the whole world, 
and made up of nations differing in manners, in character, and pursuits, yet is animated by the same Spirit of God, and is all the more marvelously strengthened thereby, the more fiercely the impious persecute and distress her, and the more craftily they plot to cut her off from all human aid. Let, therefore, abundant and most hearty thanks be rendered to him who glorifies his own name, and at the same time by showing forth his ever-ready power and help, raises up our afflicted souls to the hope of final and certain triumph. If, however, we refer all the good things that we have received to God their giver, yet at the same time we do feel the utmost gratitude towards those who have been the agents of providence, and have discharged abundantly towards us all the duties of help, consolation, loyalty, devotion, and love. Lifting up our eyes and hands towards heaven, we offer to the Lord all that has been conferred on us in his name by our children, earnestly beseeching him that he would vouchsafe speedily to hear their united prayers for the liberty of the Holy See, for the victory of the Holy Church, and for the peace of the world, and that he would bountifully reward each one with earthly and heavenly blessings, which is beyond our power. In truth, we could have wished to express to each and to all personally our gratitude, and to give to each and to all the assurance of our warm affection. But the great number of presents, letters, and addresses that have come in from every quarter render this plainly impossible. In order, therefore, that our desire may in some manner be carried into effect, we communicate our sentiments to you, venerable brethren, first of all and beg that you would announce and explain them fully to your clergy and to your flocks. And we exhort all that they continue instant in prayer unitedly with yourselves, and in full confidence of soul. For if the continual prayer of the just penetrateth the clouds, and turneth not back until the Most High regardeth, and Christ has promised that wherever two or three are gathered together in his name, and agree as to what they shall ask for, his heavenly Father will do whatsoever they shall ask. Much more must the Church Universal, by her continual and united prayer, obtain all that she asks for, so that, divine justice being appeased, she may behold the powers of hell crushed, the efforts of human malice defeated and brought to naught, and peace and justice restored to earth. But do you, venerable brethren, above all things, labor with your soul and strength to this end, that, being ever united together in a close phalanx, you may confront the enemies of God, ever attacking, with fresh plots and violence, the church, which no force shall ever destroy, that you may the more easily and successfully resist their onset and defeat their armies. This is what we do most earnestly desire and most fervently pray for. And with all our heart do we ask it for you and for the whole household of the Catholic Church. And as a pledge of that most wished-for issue and of the divine favor, and as an undoubted proof of the special affection and gratitude that we feel towards you and each one of you, venerable brethren, we do from our inmost heart most lovingly impart to yourselves, your clergy and flocks, the apostolic benediction. Given at Rome, at St. Peter's, August 5th, being the Feast of St. Mary of the Esquiline, Our Lady at Nive, Anno Domini 1871, in the 26th year of our pontificate. End of Encyclical Letter, Sepe Venerabilis Fratris, by Pope Pius IX. Read by Caleb Sudfeld.